Hello everyone, and welcome back to the final episode for the beginner series of Sig Blender. In this uh, final tutorial, we're going to put our props into the exact place we want them, render out our image, and then uh, do some compositing to do some After Effects to really spruce up and give our final details to the image. So, uh, first thing on our agenda is to move our uh, armature, our pose guy, underneath this tree so he's kind of kind of sitting down there. So as soon as I right click on this armature, I jump right into pose mode. If I select these legs, I can move it on up. Whoa. JK, these are the IK bones. You want to select your IK bones, move them up. Also, let's move him generally like this. That he will be laying back a bit. All right, turn him a little towards the camera. I think. See him. He's looking good. Okay, we can rotate the IK bones. Whoops. We can rotate the feet using the IK bones. So. I guess I won't rotate them both at once, but I just have them where they make sense. All right. And now just for the arms, bring them down. Let's bring them like in a little bit. Move that elbow. I think his hand will be on his lap. I think that's a a good plan. Yeah, something like that. If we rotate this, we should be able to rotate the hand a bit. I'm just gonna get them in the in the general position I want them to be. That looks good. Bring let's see this arm over here, up here. I'll bring the elbow over. All right, I think he's chilling. Just get him closer to the. All right. So now, if we go into object mode, we can see he's posed, chilling, relaxing. Gonna move, move the hand over a little bit more. All right. Well. I'm thinking um, we can have this umbrella maybe like falling over a bit, something like that. I'm just gonna rotate so that as soon as it starts going underneath the ground, both of it is, so I know it's both touching the ground. Put it like that. So now we can see our what our render will look like, kind of. This is obviously before all of our after effects, but now we have our main guy in position. We have our umbrella in position. I'm going to just play around with the sky and make it a little darker. Oh yeah. Perfect. So, what do we want to do before we render? Um, I think I'm going to move this light a little bit, just have it more centered in the middle of the scene. I was originally planning on having it be a real world object, like a lamp on this tree. But I think after our After Effects, it won't really matter. Let's see. We can, do we want some ambient inclusion? I don't think we need any ambient inclusion right now. In this um, this tab, which we haven't used before, this is your render layers. Uh, I want to do some playing around with Mist. So we're going to turn on Mist in the Passes tab. It's going to be important so we can use our Mist. Let's see. Make sure your light, your point light is all set up with these settings. Uh, these are kind of the default, so it doesn't really matter. But... Alright, so for the final um, sort of thing to do, we're going to go to this camera that we've gone to a couple times before to change our resolution and such. Uh, we're going to go down to sampling. So what sampling is, is uh, it's basically how much detail is going to go into um, the render. and. Uh, so during the preview, which is what this is right now, it's doing 32 samples. And you can see it's kind of gray. It's actually not doing the full 32 samples. It's just trying to do them as I wait. So this is five samples. 
Um, we'll do 128 for the render. That will take my computer around like 10 or so minutes to do. So I'm going to um, take a quick break. Uh, I might actually split up the episode based on that. Um, so yeah, the, this render, you can turn the sample up and down if your computer is not sort of, say, like strong enough to do um, intense rendering. But 128 is the default for a reason. It's a pretty good number um, to render in terms of samples. So I'll show you how it starts. If you hit FN F12, it starts the rendering process. You can see time remaining, yep, around like 11 minutes for me on uh, 128. And you see it'll start jumping through, rendering out each little corner. All right. So, I'll be back after this is done. I hope you will be too for our final section of Sig Blender. Hello everybody, and welcome back. I just finished rendering out our image, and now we're going to finish it all up with the compositing. So to do that, we're going to go over to this tab, choose screen layout, and go over to compositing. We're going to use nodes and have this be the backdrop. If we add a viewer, not a split viewer, whoops. Viewer, there we go. Shift A is that, by the way. That's the hockey I was using there. You can plug it in like that, and we can see our image is right there. All right. So, compositing. What is it? Uh, it's basically all the after effects of the image. We're going to be using nodes, just like how we use nodes for the materials. So, the first thing I want to do is be able to implement this mist, right? So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add, I believe it's called map, map value. So, we're going to plug the mist into the value of the map value take that value, we're going to put that into a mix, instead of mix it will be add, we don't have to worry about composite really until the very end, we'll plug it into composite, um, but we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff here, so for now we'll just see this, and we'll do that with a factor of that, so we should make it mix, now we should make it add, all right. So now we have fog. We have a lot of fog right now. So we're actually going to turn this size down quite a bit. Uh, and we're going to turn down the color of the fog. Match like the, the atmosphere, I think. So the, um, the add here has the image from the top. It's basically adding gray to the image. We're going to add the image and the gray um, with the factor of the mist. So by in order of distance, it'll increase the mist. I'll increase that size. Maybe like 0.4 is a good amount of glow from the mist, I think. All right, now we're just gonna do some general messing of the color. Um, for every uh, compositing I do, I use three nodes. Uh, I kind of learned this from Pig Art, is a YouTuber, um, a Blender tutorial guy that I learned it from. First one is color balance, not color balance. First one is color correction nope <laughs> RGB curves that's what it's called alright so with this one you can mess with the contrast red green and blue of your image I'm gonna mess with the blue I'm gonna take it bring it up here and you can see what it does it kinda just adds a little blue tint to it Let's see where do we want it this will subtract blue this will add blue as you can imagine can mess with the curves of it all. Let's see, maybe we want it like that, maybe we want it like that, maybe we want it like that. I think that's a fine amount of blue. Next one is color balance. This is gonna be this is gonna become a long uh, tree of nodes, be warned. So this affects your um, lift, gamma, and gain, which we can mess whoa. Did not mean to do that. We can mess with, uh, usually I just kind of mess with the grayscale, I don't try and add color to it. So I see like what's going to happen if I increase it, what's going to happen if I decrease it. I think I'll keep it around like there. Gamma. For those of you that have ever ed edited pictures in the past, this is kind of a 
cakewalk. I'm gonna turn up the game. I'm gonna kind of add to that fog effect. I'm just gonna turn up the size of the fog. I want it to get real foggy. All right, and again. Mm. All right. And the last of the three pig art nodes is glare. Specifically, we're going to be using fog glow. I will turn this threshold down a bit, and then we'll wait for it. You can see it's um, compositing there. You can see it kind of starts to glow. I'm going to turn that fog glow down to low. Turn that threshold down even more. That really brightens up. Okay. I don't want the background lighting up as much as the glare of this yellow, so I think that's fine. I like 0.6 low. And then for our final bit, we're going to be adding little raindrops uh, streaking across the screen. So to do that, we're going to first going to add a texture. Uh, we're also going to create a new texture over here. If you click on this um, checker uh, checkerboard, you can hit new. Change the type to clouds. There it is. All right, so then we can select here. This is texture 002. So we'll use texture 002. So basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to change the viewer to be just this so you can see exactly what we're doing. Oh, whoops. I missed. Yeah, so you can see this is what the clouds look like. I'm going to change the scale so that the X is around 30, the Y is like 0.5, and the Z is just like 0. It's not going to change anything. All right. So um, what we're going to be doing basically is using these up and down kind of vertical lines to get our rain. So we're going to put this um, through a um, color ramp. So basically this will just increase the, the contrast of black and white as you can see as I turn it up and down. Um, this is the original and as I increase the black it takes more and more black into the image. We want to have these lines look like rain uh, streaking across like a, a view. So we're going to do that and we're also going to bring this white down kind of choke up on the amount of ramps. We want the ramp to be pretty pretty drastic. Yeah, like that. I'm going to move this black to like 0.65. I think that'll be fine. Alright. Um, I want this to be kind of rotated, so I'm going to rotate. Rotate it like negative 30 degrees, I'm thinking. Mm, that's a lot, actually. Negative 20 degrees. Okay, and so now you can see it's not actually going across the full image, so we want to scale it up as well. Scale up by like probably 1.2. Mm, it's not fitting still, maybe 1.25. 1.3 will get there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alright. Turn this this up a little more, make these range up smaller. And then we're going to mold or mix this. Mix it um, instead of just mixing it, we want to multiply. So now whatever we change this color to that we're multiplying it with, the range drops will change to that color. So we want them to be like a nice, nice light blue. Alright. Now what we're gonna do, we're simply going to do add, or not add, it's mix and switch to add. I always switch that up. We're going to mix our raindrops we just made. Um, instead of mixing them, we're just gonna add them to the uh, whole image that we were just messing with before. Now if this happens right, yay, the raindrops are in front of the front of the image. Alright, now I'm just gonna mess with the raindrops a little bit more just to get them get them right where I want them. You can change the uh, opacity, I guess is the word, of the um, raindrops I believe by changing this factor. 
might not be that factor. No, it's going to be uh, this factor. Yes, yeah, so now you can see they're less, they're less um, apparent in the image. They're like more, they have more alpha to them. I think got like 0 0.5, 0 0.4 is around where we're going to want it. Um, obviously, it's going to depend on your own image. Yeah. So, now that we finally have an image that I think we can be proud of after all of these nodes. This is really this is really one of the biggest node setups I've done in a while. I love making really long node setups. Uh, we can plug this into the composite as well. All right. Well, if we hit, oh no, not Crimea River. All right. So now that we have all of these um these nodes set up, uh, we can uh, re-render the image. Uh, I'm obviously going to cut again for that, uh, but then once the image is re-rendered and you see it, I'll show you. Then go back to default. Once this image renders again, uh, in this very view, we can hit uh, FN F3, or not, whatever whatever your F3 is. Um, and then it, that will be able to save the image in whatever type of image type you will get. Um, you can save it to wherever you want to be. You'll have your final composited and rendered image all set up for you. And that will be the end of your first uh, render. I'd like to thank you if you watched through all of these and actually managed to create an image. I know it might not have been the easiest to follow at certain times, but you know how it is. I'm actually going to, um, just for the sake of brevity, turn my sampling down to like 16. So this will render like super fast. It's going to take, it says two minutes. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed all these tutorials. I enjoyed making them, even if it was kind of me stumbling through it all at certain points. The next couple of tutorials I'm going to be doing, I think, will be related to different materials, um, how to use a more realistic um, stylization, and how to use a more uh, cartoony stylization that I like to do. Uh, besides that, I might go on to do more complex modeling, more complex methods of creating shapes, um, things of that nature, anything that really piques anybody's interest in Blender. I'm going to cut now to the very end of this image so you can see me save it. Until then, thank you for watching.